We live in a society shaped by the digital world in which rapid advancements in technology influences our ways of thinking, learning, and communicating on a daily basis. Inevitably, as smartphones and laptops become even more ubiquitous, the prospect of taking notes by hand may seem antiquated for many high school students. In fact, some of us believe that handwriting is dying. Since 2013, compulsory handwriting courses have been left out of course standards in US public schools. Shortly after, in 2016, Finland became one of the first countries to drop school mandatory handwriting sessions in favor of typing courses. Even not just our school curriculum gravitates towards the use of diverse online tools provided by one-on-one -on -one student laptop programs. So obviously, the implementation of basic computer software skills has de-emphasized handwriting across numerous worldwide curriculums. However, so has the media. In this day and age, social media and the internet come hand in hand, acting as some of the most prominent modern day sources of mass media. This is completely different compared to thousands of years ago when our ancestors first developed cave paintings, rock art, petroglyphs, and fire signals as some of the earliest means of human communication. Nonetheless, with the passing of generations, many of these communication systems have been altered and moderated, if not set aside, for more convenient linguistic alternatives. We have evolved from the alphabet system and handwritten manuscripts to newspapers, magazines, telephones, and television broadcasts. And becoming even more widespread and celebrated today, especially among the younger generations, are the use of RSS feeds, internet vlogs, and live streaming on social media platforms such as Instagram, TikTok, or YouTube. Furthermore, with accelerating technology propelling the growth of so many digital media platforms, it's unsurprising to see that some people are beginning to question the relevance of handwriting to our society. According to an opinion article released in 2016 by the New York Times, handwriting just doesn't matter anymore. More specifically, the author of the article states that indeed the desire to write faster has driven innovations throughout society. Ballpoint pens replace quill pens, typewriters improved on pens, and computers go faster than typewriters. And so, why go back? And it's not just this article. Even if you go onto community-driven platform sites such as Quora, you can find comments saying that handwriting is mostly just for signing checks or filling out personal thank you notes. And in some ways, they're not wrong. Because the fact that handwriting has significantly declined within this new digital age remains unchanged. Indeed, some of us may even expect that the significance of handwriting will soon become obsolete altogether. But despite arguments about the prevalence of typing over handwriting, numerous studies conducted by neuroscientists conclude that penmanship mastery is still a relevant skill for 21st century students. I find that one of the biggest misconceptions about handwriting is the idea that having messy handwriting is not worth it. A lot of people tend to think that if you could type better and faster on a computer, what may be a messy page full of unintelligible letters and scribbles can easily be sorted into a neatly organized document. And while having comprehensive handwriting is important to some extent, the neatness of your handwriting is never what matters most. Rather, it's the diverse mental benefits that come along with handwriting which makes it so distinctly special. And some of these benefits include effective memory recall, sharp and critical thinking, and deeper comprehension skills. By relinquishing handwriting, we would be abandoning all of the, these free benefits, and you could already start to visualize how this might just impact students' long-term educations and achievements in the future. And so, as a high school student attending this, I myself have gradually come to accept the many advantages of handwriting. And for those of you in the audience who still doubt me, I can confidently say to you right now that there are certain benefits to handwriting that just can't be replicated with a keyboard. To start off, one of the reasons I say this is because pens and keyboards bring in vastly different cognitive processes. In terms of speed, typing tends to be much less time consuming than handwriting. Now, you may be wondering, isn't this one of the main advantages of typing over handwriting? Because what could take 15 minutes to write can easily be typed up in 10 minutes or less, especially for those who learn to touch type at an early age. 
But believe it or not, this same advantage is what actually denotes its most significant limitation. Unlike handwriting, typing falls short of the psychological processes that pressure our brains to think and reflect, demanding much less attention and deliberation. Have you ever been to class, quickly typed down a large chunk of notes, and realized you didn't understand any of the information that you just recorded? Because I'm sure many of us have. And when this happens, we mindlessly type and transcribe verbatim, which means we're more prone to typing everything word for word. Surprisingly, regardless of the quantity of information you record, this tends to result in a shallow, superficial understanding of concepts. As evidence, according to a famous 2014 study conducted by Mueller and Oppenheimer, laptop note-takers performed worse on conceptual exam questions compared to longhand note-takers. Although they could transcribe more notes, 14.6% of them consisted of verbatim, whereas longhand notes only add an 8.8% verbatim overlap. This shows that sometimes we get so busy typing that we don't fully comprehend the actual information being recorded down. We hear different sounds coming into our ears, but in the end, we're simply repeating things just as a computer would. Meanwhile, unlike typing, handwriting actually forces us to slow down. Surprisingly, as we pause to listen to incoming auditory stimuli, it compels us to think more thoroughly about the type of information we record, which enables us to summarize, paraphrase, and rephrase diverse information. By doing so, we can naturally construct spatial relations between bits and pieces of information, which leads on to new ideas, concepts, and mental schemas. And in the end, all of these processes combined are what eventually allows us to create personal interpretations and explanations which resonate best with us, enhancing our memory retention, literacy, and reading comprehension skills. This is why, according to frontiers in psychology, regions of the brain associated with learning were much more active when subjects completed a task by hand, especially since it promoted deep encoding in a way that typing does not. The movement associated with handwriting is what specifically helps us encode and retain information by strengthening neural pathways. Although a bit time consuming, longhand notes serve as memory cues by recreating the content from an original lecture, lesson, or meeting, which allows for effective long-term memory recall. And all of this is only just a brief overview of the many advantages brought to you by handwriting. However, regardless of its values, improvements in modern technology make it very difficult for just students to rely solely on handwritten text. In fact, when I asked some students whether they preferred typing over handwriting, many of those who said yes asserted that different online features can allow for clearer note structuring. One sophomore described that reorganizing online written notes is effortless compared to writing by hand since information can easily be moved, deleted, copy-pasted, and searchable via command F. A friend of mine also explained how not having to worry about our handwriting getting messy or going all over the place is reassuring. But even more so than this, one of the biggest reasons why a student may prefer to type over handwrite is due to dependency on autocorrecting software such as Grammarly, Grammar Check, and White Smoke. With these kind of programs, fixing little spelling mistakes and grammatically incorrect phrases can easily be disregarded for later notice. Even without such apps, most of our phones, tablets, and laptops all tend to have a built-in autocorrecting system. Regardless of any Just Do MacBook that you happen to log into right now, if you choose Menu, System Settings, and click on the keyboard symbol on the sidebar, you would see a correct spelling automatically on or off button. And as favorable as this sounds, complete reliance on autocorrecting softwares is critical, especially for juniors and seniors taking the IB and AP exams. Without a doubt, no autocorrecting software will be available on any IB or AP external exam. This is why many juniors and seniors accustomed to typing find it arduous transitioning altogether from spell check. To give an example, a senior that I know of just told me recently that because she wasn't a native English speaker, one of the hardest things she found about taking the IB English exam stemmed from the fact that she could no longer check whether or not her sentences made grammatical sense. A fellow junior also admitted that because he relies on Grammarly to help pinpoint little errors and mistakes, he would easily feel anxious or self-conscious whenever having to write essays on paper. Aside from juniors and seniors, even a few underclassmen have expressed sharing similar worries for their upcoming years. 
As a matter of fact, this problem is quite widespread for students all over the world. After collecting data from 500 students of five different faculties, the University of Buya attests that dependency on autocorrection can lead students to a lack of interest in mastering the spellings of words since their gadgets often play a role of reference whenever doubt arises about a word's spelling. Now, after listening to all of this, the last thing I want you to do is leave this room later on thinking that technology and typing are ultimately bad, because they're not. The, nowadays, both technology and, and typing are an essential part of nearly any workforce, and our society wouldn't have advanced as far without it. Rather, the question we should be asking ourselves is, what can we do in our routine to maintain the benefits of handwriting while still incorporating the values of technology? How can we keep our handwriting alive within these ever-changing times? Surprisingly, the answer is pretty simple. Start writing. Alongside using different technological devices, students should get into the practice of writing by hand, whether it's through classroom notes, essays, diary entries, or even just writing out a grocery list as early on as possible. For those comfortable with an iPad, using a stylus pen is also a great option since it still incorporates handwriting movement while simultaneously allowing for the technological benefits of color coding, changing layout formats, exporting diagrams, and so on. In fact, Edward Gentes, professor of de developmental psychology at the University of Geneva, states that touch screens and styluses are taking us back to handwriting. Our love affairs with keyboards may not last. To build on even further, Claire Busterat, a specialist on codex manuscripts at the Maurice Halbach's Research Center, built on. Writing is still very much alive in our surroundings, in advertising, signings, graffitis, and street demonstrations. And perhaps in their own ways, these all compensate for the soulless keyboards that have become far too prevalent within our lives. But either way, the most important thing is that we're able to keep handwriting as something regular and consistent within our busy everyday schedules. And if this happens, handwriting will persist. For a very long time, both Eastern and Western cultures have recognized handwriting as something that represents one's mindset or personality. For this reason, children in the past were taught to correct, refine, and polish their handwriting from a young age. In today's advancing world, maintaining old traditions and practices like this can be a challenge. Nonetheless, as high school students, preserving our handwriting has never been more essential. The importance of handwriting goes without saying for IB and AP evaluators. However, for students who are constantly learning to evaluate their own skills, learning to have adequate handwriting may be more than necessary for a successful future. Therefore, to end things off, I want you, whether you're a student, teacher, staff, or parent, to leave this room thinking, regardless of the media or the changing times, how can I reframe this view of old, tedious tradition into a sustainable daily habit? Thank you.